Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about altered mental status, exactly what to do from BLS to ALS in altered mental status. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's Paramedic Coach back here with another video. Into this video, I'm gonna be talking about altered mental status. If you're new here, hit like and subscribe down below. This is the channel you've been searching for for EMS medicine from EMT all the way to paramedic level. So BLS to ALS, this is your home. Now let's talk about altered mental status. So here's the thing, whether it's chest pain, difficulty breathing or altered mental status or abdominal pain, back pain, you gotta have a certain approach in emergency medicine. Things happen fast. So I have a mnemonic. I wanna shout out my good friend, John Bolinski. Uh, for the inspiration behind this mnemonic. He has a mnemonic called SNOT, S-N-O-T. I put my own twist on this mnemonic for EMS. So I have my own mnemonic, it's called, there's four S's in altered mental status. If it's not N-O-T, one of these four S's, then we move on from there. And then after we do that, we're gonna move on from there. Well, let me show you what it looks like. You ready? Here we go. So there's four S's in altered mental status, okay? So we start there. These are the four things we can't miss. These are big things. Okay, number one is sugar. So what do we do? Check a blood sugar, okay? What's next? Stroke. Why is stroke second? Well, is that no stroke is a stroke until we check a blood sugar, okay? So we're gonna do a fast exam. Okay, so what, hey, what's, what's the fast exam again? Okay, facial droop, arm drift, how's their speech? Hey, when were they last seen normal? Okay, what's next? Well, now we're gonna have seizure. So are they post from a seizure? How are you gonna know that? Well, are they being a little combative? Do they have a seizure history? Check a med list. Hey, do you know the most common seizure medications? I can give you some here. Ready? Kepra, Lamictal, Tegretol, Dilantin, okay? Depakote. Those are gonna be your main seizure medications that you'll see on the field. I think the two most common, in my experience, Kepra, Dilantin. Now you know, okay? Next is sepsis. Okay? So we're talking about sepsis. What is that? Well, that's bacteria in the blood. That shouldn't be there. So how does that happen? Sepsis happens from pneumonia and UTI most commonly. Could there be other things? Sure, for sure. But check for signs of pneumonia and UTI is a good start. Sepsis. Now, if it's not, if let's say we check the blood sugar, it comes back normal at 88. Negative stroke scale. No seizure history, you know, they didn't bite their tongue, no blood in their mouth, they're not combative, they're just altered. So they're not post Sepsis, no sign of infection that we can see in the, in the EMS in the outside world. Okay, well then we move to not, N-O-T, not. So N is for Narcan, okay? So what does that really mean? It means are we at a sneaky overdose? Not just an opiate overdose. Hey, let's watch out. Are we at an overdose here? Now, when I say overdose, everyone thinks, oh, it's somebody abusing heroin. No, no, no. Hey, do you know there's an accidental overdose as well? Okay? So again, check their med list. If it's a patient in a nursing home or something like that, hey, did they get any new meds? What were their meds last given to them? Try to, with the signs and symptoms, try to figure it out, okay? So are we at a sneaky overdose? Check around your scene if they're out on the street, okay? Are we at a sneaky overdose or a poisoning event? Okay, think about it. So you're gonna think about that, okay? O is for O2, oxygen. So could this patient be hypoxic? 
What do we do for that? Check a pulse ox. So we do a pulse ox. Okay? Now the main, main to remember is remember, carbon monoxide poisoning patients, okay, whether we're thinking poisoning here, here, the pulse ox won't matter. So you gotta take in the whole scene. Just remember, if someone's hypoxic, they can be altered, okay? Teach for trauma, okay? This is where I changed it. Teach for trauma, okay? Trauma means like a sneaky overdose, sneaky trauma. So what this means, remember to expose your patients. So if they're wearing a hat, take their hat off, okay? A hematoma could be under here. I could have got hit, and that's why I'm altered. Do check my eyes, expose, look at my arms, my legs. Make sure I'm not missing a sneaky injury, sneaky trauma, internal bleeding, sneaky trauma, okay? Now, if we go through this, and I'm gonna give you a scenario, here we go, watch. Let's say that your patient is GCS 13. They're normally GCS 15. This started about two, two and a half hours ago. And then they're like, you know what, this is getting a little weird, we're gonna call 911, okay? You check the sugar, it gets, comes back at 88. You do a stroke scale, it's a negative stroke scale. Okay, no droop, no arm drift, speech is fine. Last time seen normal, you write it down, it was two and a half hours ago, okay. No recent illness, sickness, no signs of sepsis, pneumonia, UTI, no seizure history. No one saw the gentleman have a seizure, okay? No Keppra, no Dilantin, right? We move on, then we move on to NOT, not. Sneaky overdose? Well, the patient takes no meds, okay. Well, I don't see anything on scene, okay. No signs, okay. O2, pulse ox comes back at 96. Good enough, better than 94, they're not hypoxic. T for trauma, you do a head and toe, no sneaky trauma. What, pe what could be going on with this patient? Well, here it is, okay? These, the, the, the four S's and the knots, we cannot miss these things. But what do we do next as providers? Our vital signs, okay? And by the way, if you didn't notice, this entire system is from EMT to medic. There's nothing special here, okay? The, the whole four S's in the NOT is about scene assessment, patient assessments, and physical exams. History taking. That's all it is. So from EMT to medic, you can, you can do that. The next step, if it's not the four S's, it's not NOT, we're gonna move into vital signs. So BP, heart rate, pulse, okay? What else? Respirations, okay? So now we're gonna get our vital signs. We know that a hypotensive patient could be altered. That could be the culprit. Then we're gonna to try to figure out why are they hypotensive? What's making them this way, okay? But first we gotta say that they are hypotensive. Okay, heart rate, pulse, okay. Are they too slow or too fast? That can cause you to be altered. Okay, respirations, same thing. Are they too slow or too fast? That can be a ventilation problem, right? Your culprit might be respiratory or hypotension or too slow or too fast. Okay, now what if this patient with the GCS of 13, what if everything's normal, everything's fine? Their vitals are normal and the four S at OT, all fine. We got one more step we got to check, okay? And here it is. So the final step we need to check is electrolytes. The final step. Now, how do we check electrolytes in EMS? Think about it. This is from my medics. Do a 12 lead EKG. What's the most common electrolyte problem we're gonna see? Hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. Okay, hyperkalemia on 12 lead is gonna start with PT waves and end up with this funky sine wave. Remember that sine wave appearance? Start with PTs, when it gets worse, it moves into this. Hyperk. Okay? This patient, think about electrolytes. Who do we think about electrolytes in? Well, obviously someone who's done an immense activity. Okay, think about your, when I think electrolytes, I also think about stuff like heat stroke, heat exhaustion, environmental, when I think of it. The other way I think about it is, hey, I tell you the last thing is electrolytes, E for electrolytes and the E for environmental. 
right? That's the way that I think about it. So when I assess a patient, okay, so I want you to think about it. When I assess a patient, okay, let's say you walk into a family's home. Hey, my husband here, Joey, he's not acting right. He's been acting like this for two hours. Okay, my alarm bells go off. The first thing I'm thinking about is my four S's. I'm gonna hit him with the four S's. So first thing I'm gonna do is check a sugar, a stroke scale, ask history of any seizures, check a med list for seizure medications, and then I'm gonna uh, ask or check for signs of sepsis. If that's cleared, I'm gonna move on. The next thing I'm gonna do is move into my NOT. Are we at a sneaky overdose or potential of one? Hey, can I get a pulse oximetry? And then do a head and toe for trauma. If all that's clear, now it's, well, I got, I, everyone does vitals. We all got to do vitals. I'm going to do vitals. How are my vitals? Good. Okay. What's next? Do a 12 week. Now, if everything's normal at that point, what do they need? Routine AOS care. They need routine AOS care. Put an IV in your patient and do a second 12 lead on the way to hospital. Always do two 12 leads to compare them. That is going to be your altered mental status workup. In EMS. Now, if you're one of these three people, I want to help you out at a higher level. If you're preparing for school, if you're just getting into EMS as an EMT, advanced EMT, or going to medic school, or maybe right now you're in school and you're struggling to understand the why behind the concepts in school, or maybe you're someone who is getting ready for the NREMT boards, you know, the exam that literally grants you if you can work in EMS or not. If you're one of these three people, I have a program that can make school and the National Registry Boards way, way easier. We call it passing on easy mode. And I know it sounds crazy, but click the link down below in the description and I wanna show you my audio and video program to study video audio over studying out of the textbooks, okay? What I've done is concise 160 plus videos plus a private student community to ask me questions while you're studying, preparing, in school, or studying for your boards. The program down below, the link in the description, will find you wherever you are on your EMS journey. So I wanna thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all your kind words, your shares, your comments, and everyone, I will see you tomorrow. Take care. So the fact that you understand not everyone learns from a book or a PowerPoint is just outstanding. Um, I. I know I'm one who I need to hear it. I need to see it being done and even having someone help read it or explain things. It, I learned better, way, way better that way. So truly appreciate everything you do. So anytime I get the chance, I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's, truly helpful and amazing at what you do from 120 questions passing two sections um near passing one and then i think two below passing to seven questions passing completely i want to help decrease failure rates for nremt for emt school for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that, and I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.